Hey guys, Brett from History Feels here. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're joining for the first time, thanks for watching. So the captions on Instagram are limited to 2,000 words, and TikTok is also a short form app. So I've decided to start doing at least once a week longer form stories here on YouTube. So if you like this format, please feel free to subscribe and comment on the video what other stories you'd like to see. So without further ado, let's get into it. When I first heard this story, I was surprised, especially in a post 9 11 era how little it's been talked about. But it was a major event in America at the time that happened at an important juncture in history, the waning days of World War II. It also occurred in New York City, of course, one of the most famous cities in the world, and at the tallest building in the world at the time, the Empire State Building. The event is definitely on the darker side as over a dozen lives were lost. After all, it is a plane crash. But you'll hear about an amazing survival story that came out of it, including a world record that still stands to this day the survival of the world's longest elevator fall. The Empire State Building, like all New York, was hidden by fog as a Mitchell bomber trying to reach Newark Airport crashed into the tallest structure in the world. The news clip you just heard and what you're looking at now is the Empire State Building on July 28, 1945, just after 10 a.m. You'll notice, of course, the smoke billowing from the building, but if that wasn't ominous enough, this is what it looked like inside of the building that day in the aftermath. A B-25 Mitchell bomber had crashed right into the face of the north side of the Empire State Building between the 78th and 80th floors. This made an 18 by 20 foot hole in the building. Upon impact, the plane's fuel exploded, filling the interior of the building with flames all the way down to the 75th floor. I'm releasing this video July 28th, 2021, which is 76 years to the day of the accident. So as I mentioned in the intro, when I first heard this story, I was surprised at how little this event's been talked about. But as these images show, you can imagine they remained etched in the minds of those who experienced them for decades to come. So here's how the crash happened. It was the waning days of World War II and the captain was a man named William F. Smith. He was flying a routine mission ferrying servicemen from Massachusetts to New York City's LaGuardia Airport. But the day was foggy and when Captain Smith arrived in the New York area, the weather was getting worse. Now it's worth noting that Captain Smith was an extremely experienced pilot. He had led some of the most dangerous missions in World War II in Europe. Here's a quote I read from a brief bio that I found on him. Quote, he had a jaunty devil may care attitude and was very popular with the men who flew with him. He had completed more than 40 missions in Europe with the 8 Air Force and had been awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. So as Smith gets into the New York metro area, he calls the Guardia and requests clearance to land. With nearly zero visibility, the tower suggested that Smith not land and fly to Newark Airport instead. Now it's unclear exactly what happened next, but somehow Smith made a mistake and started flying directly over Manhattan. Smith's last words to the LaGuardia Tower were, From where I'm sitting, I can't see the top of the Empire State Building. The 12-ton B-25 plowed into the 79th floor of the building at about 200 miles per hour. The plane's wings were sheared off, parts of them clinging to the gaping hole in the side of the building. 800 gallons of aviation fuel poured out of the punctured tanks and down the hallways and stairwells. Flames shot upward as far as the 86th observation floor deck. Both of the plane's engines tore off the wings and shot through the building. One fell into an elevator shaft, the other hurtled completely through the building, ripped out the other side, and then fell 900 feet through the roof of a nearby building, destroying a penthouse art studio below. Now, July 28th was a Saturday, thankfully, so much of the building was taking the day off. The accident happened around 10 a.m., but there was one organization there that was hard at work, and it just happened to be on the 79th floor. There were about 15 men and women working for the National Catholic Welfare Council. Tragically, nine of the women were killed instantly. One of the workers who survived, who was a volunteer, was named Catherine O'Connor. She said, quote, There were five or six seconds. I was tottering on my feet, trying to keep my balance and three quarters of the office was instantaneously consumed in the sheet of flame. One man was standing inside the flame. I could see him. It was co-worker Joe Fountain. His whole body was on fire. I kept calling to him, Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. He walked out of it. Fountain would die of his injuries four days later. One other man, the publicity officer for the Catholic charity, was killed when the force of the blast threw him out of a window. Fourteen people were killed in total. All three aboard the plane, Colonel Smith, Staff Sergeant Christopher Domitrovich, and Navy aviation machinist mate, Albert Perna. Perna was simply hitching a ride, and his body was not found until two days later when search crews discovered that it had entered an elevator shaft and fallen to the bottom. So the survival story I mentioned earlier. 
20-year-old Betty Lou Oliver was working her very last day as an elevator operator and was on the 80th floor when the plane hit the building. She was thrown from her elevator car and suffered severe burns. First aid workers placed her on another elevator car to transport her to the ground floor, but the cable supporting that elevator had been damaged in the incident and it fell 75 stories, ending up in the basement. Oliver amazingly survived the fall, but had a broken pelvis back and neck when rescuers found her amongst the rubble. Now, this is a very odd world record, but it remains the record for the longest survived elevator fall. She went on to make a full recovery. She'd had three kids and died in 1999 in Fort Smith, Arkansas at age 74. Now to the aftermath. Firemen and medical workers responded within minutes. With several elevators out, they could only ride as far as the 60th floor, and then they walked the rest of the way up. The fire was put out within 40 minutes. Another odd record that I read, the Empire State Building fires the only significant fire at such a height to be brought under control by firefighters. Though its structural integrity was not affected, the crash did cause nearly $1 million in damages, which translates to about $14 million in today's money. Despite the damage and loss of life, the building was open for business on many floors on the next Monday morning, less than 48 hours later. One last interesting item that I'll leave you guys with. Eight months after the crash, the U.S. government offered money to the families of the victims. Some accepted, but others initiated a lawsuit that resulted in landmark legislation. The Federal Tort Claims Act of 1946, for the first time, gave American citizens the right to sue the federal government. That concludes today's story. If you guys watched this far, I really appreciate it. One quick note, I'm certainly not a historian, just a fan of the stories from the past. So most of the information here obviously needs to be pieced together by various sources. I will cite them in the caption area below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and please let me know what other topics we should cover. I'm looking forward to doing these at least once a week, hopefully a couple times a week.